Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're gonna be providing some short background information on how to use the force method for statically indeterminate systems when we're dealing with a truss. In particular, we're gonna be looking at statically indeterminate trusses. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So first, we wanna make a note that this method, which is the force method, works best or works well when your degree of indeterminacy is the first degree, okay? So what does that mean? That means that if you have a statically indeterminate trust to the first degree, this method works well. So can you use it when you have a statically indeterminate trust to the second or third degree or even higher? Yeah, you can, but it becomes very inefficient, okay? It becomes very tedious to do this by hand. So when you have a statically indeterminate truss that's uh, indeterminate to the second, third, or higher degrees, you typically would not use the force method. So works well when you only have one degree of indeterminacy, okay? Next, you may either use virtual work or Castigliano's method as your deformation process. So remember, the real um, kind of work you've gotta do when you're doing this by hand is really in calculating those deformations, okay? And so for trusses, we know that we're often interested in joint displacements, and we know to calculate a joint displacement, we have to use either virtual work or Castigliano's method. So these are your two methods kind of in your arsenal that you wanna use when you're using the force method to calculate um, a redundant force in a statically indeterminate truss. Now here's the question, which one would be a little bit better to use, virtual work or Castigliano's method? So um, maybe pause the video and think about it if you wanna answer it to yourself, because I'm about to tell you. I say virtual work is the one you wanna use, okay? Now let's think about why. Well, if you watched the previous video, uh, when we provided some background information on the force method, we said in my previous video that um, we have to analyze a unit load system that's similar to the redundant system. Well, think about it. When you do virtual work, what are you doing when you perform the virtual work process? You're using a unit load at some point, right? So because virtual work already utilizes a unit load, that's why virtual work would be a better choice than Castigliano's method when you're analyzing a statically indeterminate truss, okay? Now, the next thing you wanna do is note if the truss is internally or externally indeterminate. What does that mean, internally indeterminate versus externally indeterminate. Let's look at a couple of examples, okay? Let's start with one that is gonna be internally indeterminate, okay? Internally indeterminate, wrote index, <laughs> indeterminate truss, okay? So this here, what I'm about to draw is an example of an internally indeterminate truss. Let's say we have four joints here and we have six members. Let's say we have a pin and a roller here, okay? So notice how many joints we got, one, two, three, four. All right, so the number of joints is four. How many members do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. This overlap is not a joint, so the uh, number of members, M equals six. And how many external reactions do we have? We've got three external reactions, right? You got, you got uh, an X and Y direction at the pin, and you just have a Y reaction at that roller here. So uh, if you do M plus R, then what do you get? You get uh, nine, okay? And then when you do 2J, you get eight, all right? So M plus R is greater than two J, and so your degree of indeterminacy, of course, is one, all right? But it's internally indeterminate because of the number of members, all right? Think about that one more time. It's internally indeterminate because 
it's the number of of members that is uh, contributing to the indeterminacy, not the external support reactions, okay? And think about it. You've got uh, X and Y reaction here and a Y reaction there. So you have three external support reactions. And so globally for this whole thing, um, if you had, you know, applied loads here, for example, if you had like all these different applied loads, could you solve for the three external reactions uh, of this of this truss? Sure, you could solve for these three external reactions just using equilibrium equations, which means that the compatibility equation you would need to solve for all the member forces eventually would have to do with uh, compatibility of a member, okay? Not necessarily or not really of the reactions, okay? Does that make sense? So you can't answer me, but think about that that makes sense. All right, now let's talk about an externally indeterminate truss, okay? Externally indeterminate truss. Okay, an example of an externally indeterminate truss could be something like this. You got a three bar truss here, but you have two pins, okay? So here the number of joints equals three, the number of members equals three, but the number of reactions equals four, okay? And so here you have M plus R equals seven, and then you have two J equals six, and so, of course, you have M plus R is bigger than 2J, and the degree of indeterminacy is 1 degree. So it's still statically indeterminate to the first degree, but here you've got four external reactions, 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's say you've got, you know, a real some real loads here. Can you solve for just these reactions using equilibrium equations alone? The answer is no, because you have four external reactions here, okay? So they're both statically indeterminate, and both are indeterminate to the first degree, but one of them is indeterminate because of the additional member forces and members, and the other is indeterminate because of the additional support reactions, okay? And so the question you wanna ask yourself whenever you're looking at a truss, when we say note if the truss is internally or externally indeterminate, um, you, want to, you want to try to recognize or ask yourself, can I solve for the externals alone with just equilibrium equations? If the answer is yes, I can solve for all of the externals using only equilibrium equations without a compatibility equation, then it's going to be internally indeterminate, okay? And the indeterminacy is caused by having additional members, okay? If the answer is no, I cannot solve for all of these externals, like in this case over here, there's four externals, but you only have three equilibrium equations, then uh, the reason why that's indeterminate is because of the external reaction, uh, an extra external reaction, not because of an extra member force. So that would be externally indeterminate. Now, again, how, why does this matter? Well, this uh, recognizing is this going to be internally or externally indeterminate will inform us on what we should um, take as our redundant. Okay, so I'm going to make a note here. I'm going to say this will inform us on what we should take as a redundant. Okay, so guess what this is gonna lead us to conclude? When we have an internally indeterminate truss, which again is indeterminate because we have an extra member force, what we're gonna do here is take a member force as the redundant, okay? What happens if it's externally indeterminate? If it's externally indeterminate, we're gonna take 
a reaction as the redundant. Okay, so uh, that concludes this little bit of background information on how we um, need to go into approaching statically indeterminate trusses when we're going to use the member uh, the, the force method. Now, notice we we have not actually done it yet. We have not actually solved a problem using the force method for a truss. This is just the preliminary thought process of what we need to go into in order to effectively fully analyze a truss um, for uh, using, the, using the redundant method. Now, last point here, okay? Once the redundant force is solved for, we can then use basic equilibrium procedures to solve for the rest of the member forces, okay? So again, once we solve for that redundant force in, in our indeterminate truss, after that, if you want to solve for all of the other member forces uh, or all of the reactions of your truss, we just use equilibrium, equation, uh, equilibrium processes at that point. What are our equilibrium processes when dealing with trusses? What are they? Well, you got two of them. You've got method of joints and method of sections. So once you knock out and determine that redundant force, whether it's a member or whether it's a reaction, if a problem asks you, hey, I want you to solve for the rest of these member forces or the rest of these reactions, at that point, just use equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium processes, which for trusses, the two uh, equilibrium processes that we know from statics, from basic statics, method of joints and method of sections. All right. So that concludes this video. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe.